All right, so I have the unit plug uh, just set out as is. I kind of wanted to show you the power supply. Um, that hadn't really been talked about. The cord's kind of short. It does have the locking end. Um, it is a bit short, I would say. It's maybe, oh, five feet. Um, well, no, let's say six feet. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but if you're mixing console or whatever you're having to plug this into, is a good distance away it could you know cause some issues or you have to use an extension cable or something of that nature so i'm going to go ahead and screw this in plug it in and kind of just walk you through some of the things that hadn't been talked about in uh previous videos all right so i actually grabbed an extension cord for the purposes of this video so there's a power on button right there that you use to power it on when you turn it on it it as you can see, it asks you, you know, to turn down the volume of monitor A and monitor B to be able to start. So, so a lot of stuff's been talked about. You've got mix A, mix B, um, volume control for your groups, and assigning the groups is pretty simple. So we're just going to kind of walk through some of the, you know, setup things uh, right now. So we've got, you know, I'm going to hit the setup key right here. There's eight pages of menus in this thing. Uh, mixer mode, you could either do dual or single mode. You, you, this is also your select button. So as you roll through the different presets, you can change that. Um, I've got an SD card inserted in here. Now, there hadn't been anything talked about that. You can set a recording trim uh, to either, you know, boost gain or, you know, record it right at zero or even reduce gain just by pressing that button. And here's something that's really interesting, this record mode. You can, there's several settings you can choose from. Mix A records, mix A, complete mix, including your instrument. You have a mix minus A, where, where it'll actually record your entire mix minus your instrument. So let's say you're at a practice session with your band and you wanna play back that mix later, you can simply just play it off of right off the right off the DP48 my, without your instrument and play through the song uh, as many times as you'd like. And then of course there's the same options for mix B. So you have mix B and minus mix B. So that's a really handy feature. I'm actually going to upload a clip of um, me using this and let you hear what it sounds like. I've got a clip of just you know I'm a drummer, so I've got a clip of me just playing drums, and then I've got a clip of uh, our entire worship team that I'm playing drums with and this was uh this was a great little feature uh, allowed you to do that right on the right on the right on the device without having to do anything with front of house uh, there's a format for the SD as well and then this is where you would play back said recording uh to practice along to or to listen to um so and these are just you know if you have an aux plugged in you can turn that on or off i, I turn the ambient mics off I, like i said i'm a drummer all it would be is cymbal bleed so i'm not using that uh but you know it might be <clears throat> helpful for some of you okay now here's your reverb settings you get a couple different to choose from ambience club hall cathedral uh and all those are one reverb so there was a little bit of confusion on a couple of the reviews i've saw you get a reverb send per group, but you do not get a reverb uh, return per group. In other words, whatever you send to the reverb is an overall reverb for that particular mix A or mix B. So it's not like you get a reverb return for drums and then you have a separate one for vocals. You can send all those things to the reverb, but the, but the actual volume or the returns um, coming back will be one uh, grouped reverb setting, which is, and here are your settings for that. You've got a club, a hall, or a cathedral. And, and these are just aux settings and mic settings, again, for the ambient mics. There's one here for A and one there for B. There's a LCD brightness, you know, just normal stuff. And the remote on and off. Okay, so that's something that I really had to dig deep. Oh, sorry, hit the camera there. To find out what exactly is up with that. So, there's a little bit of a bug in the software. Um, you can assign group names, but only through the SD card. In other words, you create a, a .csv file, and it has to be called names.csv to load into there. I spent hours naming all the different groups, and then I'd import it, said wrong format. The file actually has to be named names.csv for it to be accepted into the groups. Um, the remote feature, they said they're working on it, and it will be available on the next update. 
but as of now, it's it's kind of it's it's not working. At least um, as far as I can tell, uh, they haven't released that. And this broadcast and device ID, I'm not 100% sure what that is. I hadn't really had to mess with that. Um, and these are just kind of the different ways you can set up the mixer. You can clear it all, uh, Ultranet 12. So if you just wanted to use the Ultranet ports, the Ultranet 16, you could use 16 Ultranet ports, or most people will probably use the 12 stereo group so that you get the entire mixer. And you can mix it how you want. And this is just AS50 settings. Um, you can have you know, for the through port on the back of the, um, and this is where you, uh, on the back of the DP48. And then the group names is where you would import the group names for your groups. So let's just kind of dive into that part of it. All right, so we have mix A. This is kind of the main menu, and it kind of gives you your limiter. That's my overall EQ. You have EQ settings for the overall mix for both mix A, and there's mix B. It hadn't even been set up. It's completely flat. I've set mine up. Mix B will be our guitar player on a wireless IEM, so he's just going to set that later. Mix A, like you said, you've got a low, a mid, and a high, and, and you've probably seen in other videos, there's no Q uh, adjustment. You just have a shelf, I think it is, or it might be, yeah, it looks like a kind of a PEQ for the mids. And this is for the overall mix, okay? And then you have compression, and the compression is kind of a more of a percentage scale. And and, uh, and that's that is per group. You can set compression per group. The compressor and button in the overall mix sets the limiter, and this thing is can get crazy loud. Minus ten is actually blistering. If it ever hits that, I've already probably probably need to bring it down even further. This thing has tons of power. I use custom in-ear monitors, and it would make you deaf to turn this up all the way, even at forty percent. So that's what. You know that button does it. It does the limiter in the overall mix. Now, what you'll notice is is if a button is highlighted, it's available for uh, changes. You know, so this is your reverb that I was talking about. That's for the overall mix. You just select it. You can turn it on, and then you've got levels. Uh, I'm actually not using it, but it it is. I've tried it on the vocals. It's a nice hall reverb. It sounds really nice. Um, and then you've got you know the mic button over here and the aux in button. Like I said, I'm not using. Uh, the mic button at all. We'll kind of briefly go over some of these settings for the mic in case you guys want to do it. You see as it's active, you can see it, the level meter moving right now. You have a threshold uh, that you, you know, this is your edit knob here, and then you can just press down. It, it has a little click to it. You can set the gain, the slope, and then turn the page. You can see level A, I've got it off. And, and you know, you've got pan adjustments, so you could, you know, pan uh, if you wanted the mic panned uh, for each, you know, level A, I mean, uh, a, a mix and B mix. And then your control knobs. This is always level A. As you see, I've, I've got it off. And then level B, you just, you could see, I could turn it up. It's actually getting pretty hot right now. And then, you know, set it to off. Like I said, we're, we're probably not using that feature, but there it is in case you want to do it. Same with the aux channel, kind of exactly the same settings. I probably don't need to go over that. Uh, we're not using that either, so we'll probably just roll that off for now for each channel. Okay, and then, of course, you've got the, your master volume for your mixes, mix A, mix B, and then this is your group volume. And uh, for me, it's it's drums, and I've I've already labeled my groups. Um, uh, we've got an electric guitar, two, bass, and you can see you've got EQ per group and pan per group. Okay, and then you know you've got I've got each group labeled, and I did that through the SD card. So I've got vocals, tracks, click and guide, chords. We have chord cues uh, coming in for our team. Um, Talkback channels, that's like our pastor's mic, a talkback mic, you know, that's that's my pastor's mic. I mean, I'm sorry, this isn't talk. This is just talkback and um, associate pastor, you know, the, 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 the extra spare mics. And then, you know, uh, for us, we've got a lead guitar on his own channel because he's going to be using this keys and acoustic guitar. And uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's our click guide. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got a recorded session on uh, my X32, gonna plug in and then kind of walk you through some of that. 
Intro, All right, two, as you hear, I've three. got a session going right now, and it is, uh, this is coming directly from my DP48, so um, we're going to kind of go through this. Uh, so this is the group volume here, so I, at any time I wanted to turn my group up, which for me is drums, so if I shelf the drums, it'd be there, and I'll put it back, okay? Um, let's say we wanted to uh, look at the drum, drum group. Uh, it's currently at 6.5. If I were to turn it down, you hear it go down, see, just like that, and bring it back up. All right, now, what's kind of interesting that people have talked about, we haven't really seen, if you hit the edit button, it solos that group, and you can see all the things that are inside the group, and at the different levels, they're sent. And if I hit this button, I can also adjust the pan. So for instance, my overheads are pan hard right, pan hard left, right? And I've also included drum reverb in here. Um, what's nice about a group level is you can send that reverb at minus 20, and since it's taken it straight from the preamp, as I turn up and down the drum group, the reverb and also goes up and down. Okay, if I hit the assign button here, you can go through every channel and you'll hear it you know, solo and, well, I'm going kind of fast, but you can hear it solo each channel as we go through there. And you can decide, you know, which one of these do I need. Um, you know, these are different vocalists. You can hear them being soloed as I go through that. And then of course, back to the drum group. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Everything in red is a currently active channel and everything in the little blue box is what's selected in that particular group. So if I hit the assign button, I just go back out to the group page. And the same thing with, uh, you know, if you only, for instance, uh, if you only want one thing for your instrument, hit edit, you can see it's his guitar. Uh, it's panned hard left and right because it's a stereo rig. Um, and again, EQ and compression per group, that's uh, a really handy feature. We'll talk about a couple other things with the uh, SD card because I haven't seen a lot about that. So. Um, here's all the different, if, if you hit the SD record button, you can see all the different files I've, I've got on here that I've recorded previously. And to record, you'll see what's lit up, lit, uh, lit up right now. So if I wanted to record, I just would hit this button right here and you see that it's recording, uh, this particular tape, what's going on right now. There's a stop button. You see they illuminate when they're available. You hit the stop button there. We've done that recording. Play it back. You'd simply uh, hit hit the button right there. Play lights up, and the tape gets recorded back. Like I said earlier, I'll I'll, I'll send some links to some of my recordings in the uh, or I'll probably put some of those links. We'll see what happens in or some of those uh, samples rather in the uh, in the video uh, recorded from the. SD card. But uh, let's see if there's anything else. And then there's, you know, you can load presets on here. Like I've got, I've got one preset stored right now, just in number one spot. And you would just select that uh, to store it. So if I wanted to store, let's say this session, it would just say you want to overwrite the slot, say yes, and you know, you're done. Of course, you can delete the, the presets as well that in the, in the same fashion. So we're not going to delete that. We just did that. And then the read and write, um, not real sure. The reset resets the whole mixer. I haven't really got into a lot of that. Um, and then, you know, just some locks you can put on there. That's pretty much all I can think of. Uh, there's your meters page. It tells you your SD status uh, there. Um, not... That's all I can think of. If you guys have any questions, just comment below. Um, like I said, there was a, a while to get this set up. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, uh, let's get into a mix so we can take a look at it. So if you hit the edit button, you'll notice... Um, let's get over here. Oh. Sign button. Okay, there we go. So if you, if you, if you need to edit or add channels... What's what's nice is you now mine did not come with the latest firmware update. I had to update it through the SD card. Once you update it, every channel label will show up 
coming straight from the board. So however it's labeled on the board, when you're going to add channels to your group, it will show up in the display right here, which really helps out uh, tremendously rather than just guessing channel 19, what's channel 19? Well, it tells you based on the board. So um, that's that's pretty helpful uh, for, for me. And hopefully this uh, helped you guys out. If you have any questions, uh, let me know and I'll, or if you'd like to see something else on the product, uh, just hit me up in the comments. Thank you.